The first Sasanian coins were struck in the name at the top right, in the name of um, Ardashir and Ardashir, Ardashir's father, Papak, a local ruler of Pars, and also Ardashir's brother, Shapur. I haven't uh, got uh, coins of Shapur here. And Shapur, we know, died very prematurely in uh, very uh, mysterious circumstances. Uh, uh, and it is uh, often sort of assumed that Adishir had a hand in that. Uh, but they show, uh, these early coins, they show profile portraits uh, the ones of Popak and Ardashir on both obverse and reverse. But when Ardashir strike coins, he appears um, on this, these early types frontally, and his father he appears on the back. Um, uh, and the title King Shah, written uh, as Malka, appears as the title of the king. And then soon this um, title is extended to Shah and Shah, Malka and Malka, King of Kings. These coins were probably issued where Adishi was still ro local ruler of Stakhr. Now, a gold dinar of Ardashir in the British Museum, which you see at the bottom, has the short title King of Iran and not King of Kings, in combination with the portrait of the king wearing a collar or tiara. Uh, on the reverse, we find the motif of a fire altar and throne. This indicates that the Ardashir coin iconography with the obverse um, um, as you saw at the top, frontal, uh, was before the type that shows uh, the portrait in profile with a uh, fire water. We have to remind ourselves that Adishir's accession to the throne as the new king of kings did not happen swiftly. Um, and indeed, it took him some years to consolidate his power over the Parthian nobility as well as over his own family. Ardashir's victory over the Parthian king of kings, Ardavan IV or Artabanus IV, at the Battle of Hormozdegon in, in the, I've got the date, sorry, in AD. I have to get used to saying common era, 224. <laughs> and his consolidation of power as the new king of kings is commemorated in his victorious jousting relief at Firuzabad. But this did not mean an end to Parthian resistance, as there seems to be evidence for coins continuing in Mesopotamia under Artabanus' brother, Vologazes or Blush VI, until the year 228. Despite the political upheaval, and here you see actually a, a section of the jousting relief of Ardashir at Tangeab uh, uh, Firuzabad, uh, Ardashir on the right, and very similar coins with that type of hairstyle on the left. Um, so um, Ardashir set an iconographic model for Sasanian coinage. The royal portrait appears in profile on the obverse and the fire altar on the reverse. The motif of the fire altar is new compared with the coins of the previous Parthian period, although it did appear occasionally on coins of first century uh, Parthia. However, the fire altar was a common feature on uh, coins of the local kings of Persis or Pars, uh, both under the Frata Raka in the early third century before the Common Era, and also on coins from the middle of the uh, first and second century of the Common Era. And you see here a late uh, coin from Persis of the um, late second century, uh, where uh, the king wears a tiara or a collar, and on the back there is a figure, male figure, holding a barsom hand, a bundle standing in front of a fire altar. On coins of Ardashir I, the royal throne is combined with a fire altar, as you see at the bottom. This is interesting in itself because it is almost an exact replica of the Achaemenid platform throne at Persepolis. 
and um, it is here seen as also a symbol of kingship. It's not just a symbol of the sort of fire of the holy fire, but combined with the throne, it is a symbol of kingship. Uh, the Achaemenid-inspired iconography of the platform throne inevitably raises the question whether the Sasanians were in fact aware of the Achaemenids as an ancient Iranian dynasty or not. It has often been argued by many scholars also uh, that um, the, uh, this was not the case as the Sasanians merely linked the ruins of Persepolis and nearby Nachshirostam with the mythological Kionic dynasty. But um, you know, a number of scholars, including uh, Professor Darioi, has argued actually that they were aware of uh, the Achaemenid heritage, and um, that um, the, um, for example, Professor Nicholas Sims Williams in uh, Britain has also uh, shown through uh, inscription found in Afghanistan at Rabatak that um, uh, which belongs to the Kushan King Kanishka of the um, second century, that this inscription shows great similarities with the inscription of Dariush at, um, uh, at Bisutun. And the argument is that there were so many copies of these royal inscriptions even available to later dynasties that it's not impossible that they really copied the sort of formulaic um, a text and therefore um, probably did um, have an inclination, particularly in the early Sasanian period. Now, the importance, we go to now to the coins, importance of the crown as one of the royal Sasanian insignia has been the subject of many discussions, notably by scholars in the um, uh, 20th century like Ernst Herzfeld and Kurt Erdmann, and then also Vladimir Lukonin, the Russian scholar, and then um, mostly Robert Goebel, the Austrian numismatist. With the accession to the throne, each Sasanian ruler adopted a new personal crown, with some like Ardashir I wearing actually five different crowns. The Sasanian crown consisted of several different components, each linked to kingship and the kingly glory, or far. A vital component was the diadem, we heard about it in connection with the Parthian, which was tied around the head around the often the crown and ended in two long ribbons or ties and then in this huge globe or corymbus at the top of the head and it's very interesting actually when you look at uh, Sasanian uh, rock reliefs and silver plates how this, uh, these diadems are also tied around the horse's tail. The king's horse has uh, diadems tied around its tail. Uh, the shoes of the king have very long diadem ties. So they use it really uh, again and again to emphasize the sort of uh, kingly glory, actually, of, uh, of the ruler. Ardashir appears on some of his coins, bottom left, with a bejeweled kolah or tiara, which is regarded as an imitation of the, have a look at the top left, uh, kolah of Mehrdad or Mithridates II, the Parthian king of kings. Uh, I mean, there are, you know, 400 years in between, and it, it most probably is likely that he chose that, but at the same time we mustn't forget that the kings of Pars, Persis, because of the influence of the Parthians, the Parthian dynasty, they also wore uh, these tall hats as you see at the top right. So there was a tradition from the sort of uh, second century before the common era right through to the second and third century of the Christian era. So, you know, through the Parthians who provide this link, really. And the Sasanians, of course, as a dynasty from Pars or Fars, adopted this crown, but it is also possible that 
um, actually Ardashir wanted to make a statement, and maybe this is also an indication that there really wasn't such a break. That this it was important at the beginning of the uh, Parthian Empire to uh, Sasanian Empire to emphasize that we are, you know, continuing the Parthian tradition. Very much, it's very possible. Now. Um, this is the part of the tiara of Kola you saw also when we were looking at Parthian coins was very, very popular and very uh, fashionable in the, throughout the Parthian uh, period. Now, from a religious point of view, the most, I think, interesting headgear or crown of Ardashir is the crenellated crown. Uh, he doesn't appear with that type of crown on any of his rock reliefs. That is the crown that is worn by the figure who gives him his diadem, the symbol of kingship, which some of us think is Ahura Mazda. But he has coins that show him with that type of headdress. I mean, it's possible that you may argue, well, maybe this was not the actually image of Ardashir. Maybe this was the image of a divine being. But the inscriptions clearly are in the same tradition describing him as the Mazda Yasnian uh, worshipper, Lord Ardashir. And that's the crown that you see on the right. Not, you know, there are not that actually many of them in collections, but fascinating. And if you look at these uh, coins, you can see on these reliefs, Naksha Rajab and Naksha Rostam at the bottom, that the figure that either shares the diadem or hands over the diadem wears that type of um, uh, crown. And certainly at Naksha Rostam, the figure uh, on the right, who is often interpreted, usually seen as Ahura Mazda, uh, has on the uh, sort of back of the horse uh, written in Greek letters Theos. So by a Greek-speaking person, that horse is regarded as the horse of God. And very interesting because if you look at this drawing, and the relief is in um, splendid condition actually today, you see Ardashir with uh, the Parthian king of kings, Ardavan, under the horse's uh, legs. And we know it's Ardavan because um, of the hat and the crest on it, which is very similar, like it's exactly like the crest and the hat of Aravon on the jousting relief at Firuzabad that Adashir is toppling him from his horse. And underneath this figure, this divine figure, is a figure with snakes coming out of his um, head. And they definitely are snakes. Um, you regarded, interpreted as Ahrima, the evil spirit. Um, the identification um, of the two mounted figures at Naqsh Rustam is uh, secured uh, through two trilingual inscriptions in Middle Persian, Parthian, and Greek on the breast of the horses. And the figure on the right wearing a crenellated crown holding a balsam uh, in his left hand is probably Ormazd. Uh, now, um, it is interesting to note that on all these investiture reliefs of Ardashir and Ormaz, the two figures are very similarly dressed, and, uh, they, but they have different crowns. Um, and the portrait of Ormaz with mural crown, long-haired and beard, has been described by uh, the Russian scholar Vladimir Lukonin as the image ideal, as the sort of really the image of uh, royalty. And it is then used by Ardashir on uh, his coins. By doing this, Ardashir was perhaps emphasizing the, his close relationship with Ormaz and the fact that he was <coughs> chosen as the uh, rightful possessor of the Khwana or Fad. Uh, 